Greetings and welcome to the Dream Syndicate. In celebration of the Ghoul Tide season, in today's video, we're crafting a Halloween jack o' lantern art doll. To make this jack o' lantern art doll head, first we're going to start off by widening up a bit of tinfoil. Next, we're going to be covering over the tinfoil with a bit of Sculpey clay and create a nice even ball all around it. As long as you blend the clay together, it doesn't really matter how you add it. You just kind of have to pull it and knead it and make sure all the pieces of clay sort of feel like they're one unified piece. Now I'll start to mark out where some of the facial features go, or since it's a jack-o'-lantern, lack thereof, they usually just have holes cut out, right? I'm going to give this guy a spike tooth smile. What are some of your favorite looks for jack-o'-lanterns? Do you like them with the big open mouth and buck teeth? Triangle eyes? Let me know down in the comments below. This pumpkin head's super lumpy, so I'm gonna have to go around and try to smooth things out a bit. Here I'm using my thumbs to establish eye sockets. I decided I wanted to lower jaw larger, so I added more mass onto that and I'll smooth it down. I'm starting to mark out where the pumpkin stem will go, which is roughly at the top center of the head. Now I'll start to put in the vertical lines that run the length of the pumpkin. These lines run from the top center to the bottom center and sort of help reinforce the fact that it's kind of a spherical shape. If you want to join me in making imaginary reality, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. I'll just reinforce the eye sockets here, and then I'll use my clay tool to draw in the triangular shape of the jack-o'-lantern's eyes. I'm gonna use my tool to dig in and then sort of smooth it over here. Since I love jack-o'-lanterns with triangular noses, I'm gonna go ahead and give it one of those. It looks kind of skull-like and cool. Since modifying the shape of the pumpkin completely obliterated his mouth, we're going to have to go back in and carve that back in there, starting with lightly drawing the shape on the surface of the clay, and then we can carve in with our tool. And now we can go in and start to add some surface texture to the rind of the pumpkin to make it nice and bumpy and interesting looking. I'm just going to quickly define the edges of this mouth a bit more to give it a sharper angle. I want my pumpkin character to be humanoid shaped, so I'm giving him a neck, but if you just wanted to make a jack-o'-lantern, you could just not put the neck shape on there. I want the neck form to be a little thinner, so I'm cutting some of it away with this clay tool here. Next, I'm going to take this little tube form of clay and form that into this stem. I'll just stick that right on top of the pumpkin and start to blend it into the rest of the sculpt. Now I can take my tool and give it that sort of wood-like texture that the stem has. I'm going to go back and reinforce some of those vertical lines that might have got messed up a little bit as I've been working on this. It 
It's really hard to make a jack-o'-lantern without cutting the opening for the top in it, so I'm going to go ahead and carve that detail into the sculpture. With the next one of these that I make, I think I'm going to try carving the top out first because that might make more sense than texturing it and then carving it after. And here's the jack-o'-lantern art doll head all baked now of the oven. Because the head sculpt was so big, it barely fit into my toaster oven, and it got a little close to the heating element, and that's where that charred and bumpy area near the mouth is from. On some head sculpts, those bumps might ruin the sculpture, but I actually think it adds to this one. It's like a Bob Ross happy accident. I'm going to cover the whole jack-o'-lantern head with this raw umber tone. It'll serve as sort of an underpainting layer. I ended up painting a couple of layers of raw umber on this head. Next I'm going to lay in a green tone along the neck. Using raw umber, alizarin crimson, and phthalo blue, I mixed up a really dark tone and I'm painting into the eye sockets, nose, and inside of the mouth. I'm also going to use that dark mixture to shade the seam lines and around the mouth of the pumpkin. Next, we're going to make our pumpkin finally start to look like one as we add our orange paint on. To give this pumpkin the feeling like it's illuminated, I'm going to use this bright yellow tone inside of it. When it has a darker color around it, that bright yellow is going to really pop. Now I'll paint this lighter brown tone on the stem. It's okay if things are looking a little light. We're going to go over everything with a dark sepia ink wash, so everything's going to get darkened up. And here's my ink wash of dark sepia ink, water, and even a little bit of soap, as suggested by viewer Mr. Allen Ninja. The ink wash is going to highlight all those little furrows and bits that I carved into the pumpkin, and it'll look really cool. I'm just going to go back and lighten the tips of these bumps here to highlight them. And there's our jack-o'-lantern head, all painted up. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to join me in making the imaginary reality, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Until next time, make believe.